This is going to be a very exciting episode. Episode 15 is all about the Edomites. I've broken it down into five parts. In this part two of our series, we will be discussing the destruction of Jerusalem in 586 BC by the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, and we will also discuss the Edomites' involvement in that destruction and the rise of the Hasmonean dynasty in the 1st and 2nd century BC and how the Edomites became Jews. Now Asaph was an author of uh, the book of Psalms. Most of the Psalms were written by King David but uh, some of them were written by Asaph. Now Asaph was a priest. You'll find this in 1 Chronicles chapter 15 verse 16 and 17. Asaph was a family of priests whom King David had appointed to sing songs. Psalm 83 is one of their songs where they sing of the confederates of Assyria set up against them. Ashur is Assyria and Edom is one of them. Psalm 83, I'll read an excerpt from it. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites, and Moab and the Hagarines, Gebal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines and the inhabitants of Tyre. Aser, which is Assyria, is also joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. So this is just showing the confederacy that was against Israel and, that, and Judah and that took Israel into captivity into Assyria. Now, in uh, 609 BC, the Assyrian Empire fell to the Babylonian Empire, which was the second great empire. And the Babylonian Empire ended up destroying the city of Jerusalem in 586 BC. And you'll find that um, those events mostly recorded in the book of Jeremiah. And this was a judgment from God for abandoning him and serving the idols of other nations. And they were ta taken into Babylonian captivity for 70 years uh, because God still remembered his promise to David. So this was an, a punishment against Judah. Now Judah had already seen what happened to Israel. They were completely destroyed and taken away. And now they were taken away, but only for a set period of time, for 70 years. And they, they were given the promise they would come back because of David. Um, in Psalm 137, uh, we see a recording that involves Edom. There is a song um, written that is this, this psalm that a lot of people would recognize by the lyrics. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yeah, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they carried us away captive and required of us a song. They that wasted us required us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewards thee 
as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that takes and dashes your little ones against the stones. This shows what the the role the Edomites played in the destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, they threw the children of the Israel of the Jews. This is where the Jews get their name. The kingdom of Judah, that's the Jews. So the whole nation was not one nation of Israel under Solomon. Then it was divided into two nations, the northern kingdom of Israel, the southern kingdom of Judah. Judah is the Jews. The northern kingdom was taken away captive. So now it's the kingdom of Judah. It's And this is the, the beginning of the history of the Jews, who are Israelites. They are one of the tribes of Israel. The other ten tribes are gone. And the two tribes are Judah and Benjamin, which are left over. And there's also the tribe of Levi. They are all priests. They were taken out of the nation and set aside to be priests. So you have Levi, Benjamin, and Judah are Jews. The rest of them are taken away and lost to history. So, um, in the book of Lamentations was also written during the Babylonian captivity. And it, it also mentions Edom. Lamentations chapter 4, starting in verse 19. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid it waste for us in the wilderness. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord, was taken in their pits, of whom we said, Under his shadow we shall live among the heathen. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwells in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken, and shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity, but will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So that's basically saying, we pay, we're paying for our sins, but Edom hasn't yet. Um, so this... Um, this grew a great hatred between the Jews and the Edomites since the destruction of Jerusalem. And the prophet Ezekiel was taken into captivity by Babylon about ten years before the destruction of Jerusalem. There was an attack by the king of Babylon and he took some of the people captive but didn't destroy the city. And he set up a puppet king in Jerusalem. And it was during that time, about 10 years before the destruction of the city, that Ezekiel was taken as a captive. Now, in Ezekiel, he writes about Edom. Okay, first of all, Seir, Mount Seir, is Edom, the land of Edom. That's the mountain where the Edomites lived. Um, their, their capital city was named Basra. And their main stronghold was Mount Seir. So in Ezekiel 25, starting in verse 8, it says, Thus says the Lord God, Because Moab and Seir do say, Behold, the house of Judah is like all the Gentiles, or like the heathen. Therefore, behold, now this is, he starts into his judgment against Edom and Moab. Therefore, behold, I will open the side of Moab from the cities, from his cities, which were on his frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth Jeshemoth, Bel Meon, and Karathayim, unto the men of the east with the Ammonites, and I will give them in possession. 
that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations, and I will execute judgments upon Moab, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Because Edom has dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and has greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom, and I will cut off man and beast from it, and I will make it desolate. From Teman and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger, and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, says the Lord God. And in the Ezekiel verse 29, There is Edom, her kings, and all her princes, which with their might are laid by them, that were slain by the sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised, and with them that go down to the pit. And through the prophet Ezekiel, God also spoke against the land of Edom. So first he talked about annihilating all the people in Edom. And now he also speaks against the land in Edom. This is Ezekiel chapter 35. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. And say to it, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate, and I will lay your cities waste, and you shall be desolate, and you shall know that I am the Lord, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Thus I will make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it him that passes out, and him that returns. And I will fill his mountains with his slain men. In thy hills and in thy valleys, in all thy rivers, shall they fall that are slain with the sword. And I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy cities shall not return. And you shall know that I am the Lord, because thou hast said, These two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it whereas the Lord was there. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them, and I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and I have heard all thy blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, They are laid desolate, they are given to us to consume. And thus with your mouth you have boasted against me, and have multiplied your words against me, and I have heard them. Thus says the Lord God, When the whole earth rejoices, I will make thee desolate. As thou did rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do to thee, thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all Idumea, even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Idumea is uh, another, it's the, actually the Greek's form of saying Edom, or Edomites. It's uh, in the Greek, it's Idumea. So there's, all three of them are the same, Edom, Izu, and Edomia. Now in Ezekiel 36, starting in verse 5, we also can read more. Uh, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy I have spoken against the residue of the heathen 
and against all Idumea, which have appointed my land to their possession with the joy of all their heart, and with despiteful minds, and cast it out for a prey. So we can start to see the role that Edom has had in the ancient history of Judah and Israel. And when the nation of Judah and Israel were taken into captivity, the Edomites saw that as a great opportunity to move into the land. And if you see um, on, on the map, you can see the ancient kingdom of Edom in red. And when Judah was taken into captivity, the Edomites moved into Judea more. And the purple or shows the more recent kingdom of Edomia. So they were... Uh, they had their eyes on the land of Judah and Israel after they were taken away. That ends the first temple period of Israel's history. The first temple was built by Solomon and destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, in 586 BC. After the 70 years of captivity in Babylon, God set in motion the events to return his people to the land of Judah and to rebuild the temple. Um, Babylon fell to the Persian king Cyrus the Great in 539 BC, and King Cyrus issued the proclamation for the Jews to return to their homeland and rebuild in 538 BC. And this uh, begins the second temple period of Israel's history. And then Alexander the Great conquered the Persian Empire in 331 BC. And upon his death, because he didn't leave an heir, his kingdom was divided among his generals. And the nation of Judea was in the middle between the Ptolemaic Egypt Ptolemy was one of the generals of Alexander the Great. He in inherited Egypt. And so this begins the Egyptian histor history period of Ptolemaic Egypt. And that was to the south of Israel. And to the north, the Seleucid Empire, which was another one of Alexander's generals. So... The continued pressure by the Seleucid kings to Hellenize the Jews, they kept pressuring the Jews to give up their gods and to take Greek gods because the, the Greek kings were more um, pushing their culture on everybody else and they wanted other, others to adopt their uh, their writings and their language and their gods. And so this pressure on the Jews led to the Maccabean Revolt, which had started in 167 BC. A priest named Mattathias refused to offer sacrifices to the Greek gods. A Hellenized Jewish priest stepped forward to take his place, and Mattathias killed him. Mattathias and his five sons then fled into the wilderness to escape punishment. After a year, Mattathias died in 166 BC, and his son Judah Maccabee led a revolt against the Seleucid king of Syria to restore Judaism to the Jews. They smashed the pagan altars, circumcised men, and forced them to convert to Judaism. So the Jews had to be forced to convert back to Judaism from worshipping the Greek gods. And eventually the, Mac the Maccabees were victorious. They used guerrilla warfare tactics and took Jerusalem back from the Seleucid kingdom restoring Jewish sovereignty over the kingdom of Judah. For the first time, 
since Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed Jerusalem in 586. Uh, because under the Persian Empire, they were like a vassal state. So now they're completely independent for the first time since Jerusalem was destroyed by Babylon. Now Jonathan Maccabee was anointed the high priest over the temple in Jerusalem, and the temple was cleansed and restored. This cleansing and rededication of the temple at about 165 BC is remembered today by the Jewish festival of Hanukkah. Now after Jonathan was captured and killed, his brother Simon became the ruler. Simon became the first prince of the Hasmonean dynasty. And this was the uh, dynasty ruling Judea. And he was proclaimed the perpetual leader and high priest in 141 BC. In 139 BC, the Roman Republic, who was gaining political influence in the region, recognized the rule of Simon. And he was assassinated in 135 BC along with his two eldest sons. His third son, John Hyrcanus, the first took his place. So John Hyrcanus was the new king, and during John's first year as a leader, Jerusalem was besieged by the Seleucid king Antiochus VII. After a long, year-long siege, John made a truce by giving 3,000 talents of silver, which he took from the tomb of David. He also agreed to assist Syria in the war against the Parthians. In 128 BC, the Seleucid king Antiochus VII was killed in battle against the Parthians, allowing John Hyrcanus I to return to Jerusalem. After the death of Antiochus VII, the Seleucid Empire began to break apart the smaller kingdoms began to win back their independence. John Hyrcanus I took advantage of this time to expand his kingdom. He defeated the Samaritans. Now the Samaritans, when Tiglath-Pileser III, the Assyrian king, took the ten tribes of Israel into captivity, the Samaritans are the people he brought into that land to replace them. And when they came into the land, they wanted to learn the ways of the gods of that land. And so they learned of the God of Israel, and they learned of Jehovah, and they ended up building their own temple in Samaria, uh, which was caused a lot of animosity between them and the Jews because they were supposed to come to the Jewish temple, to the temple at Jerusalem to worship. They weren't supposed to build their own temple. But they didn't want to be a vassal state to Judah, so they made their own version of Israel. And this was the beginning of the great animosity between Samaritans and Jews, which is very prevalent in the New Testament. So John, Hyrcanus I, he defeated the Samaritans and destroyed their temple on Mount Gerizim, which was set up by the Samaritans. He also forced the Idumeans to be circumcised and convert to Judaism, which would play a de deciding role in the future of D Judah. So he subjugated the Samaritans and the Edomites the Edomians. Now after John Hyrcanus I died, his son Arist Aristobulus I took his place. Aristobulus reigned for one year in 104 BC. His mother was placed in charge of his father's will, but Aristobulus put her and three of his brothers in prison. His mother starved to death and Aristobulus claimed the titles of king and high priest. According to the law of Moses, only a Levite from the sons of Levi could be a priest. And according to the prophets, 
Only a son of David could be the king. Aristobulus was a Levite, but not a son of David. He conquered most of Galilee and forced them to convert to Judaism. Aristobulus died of disease and his brothers were released from prison. His oldest younger brother, Alexander Janus, took the throne. Alexander Janus married the widow of Aristobulus I, who had no children. He then had two sons with her. Her name was Queen Salome Alexandra. He ruled Judah for 27 years until 76 BC. After his death, his wife, Queen Salome Alexandra, ruled for seven years, placing her son, Hyrcanus II, as high priest. After the queen died, Hyrcanus II also became the king in, tw in 67 BC. So he's the high priest of the temple and the king at the same time. After Hyrcanus, after Hyrcanus II ruled for about three months, his younger brother Aristobulus II rose in rebellion, starting a civil war. Aristobulus II won the war and concluded a peace treaty with Hyrcanus II. Hyrcanus II thought that his life would be in danger from his brother. His advisor, Antipater the Idumean, counseled him to seek refuge with the king of the Nabataeans, an Arab kingdom whom Antipater had made secret deals with to return certain to towns to them, which had been taken over by the Judeans, if they supported Hyrcanus II in battle. The Nabataeans sent 50,000 troops and began a siege of Jerusalem for several months. It was during that siege that Rome became involved, leading to the end of the Hasmonean dynasty. Now let's take a few minutes to introduce the history of Rome into this. This concludes part two of our series on Edom. The next video in our series is going to be a very exciting one. It includes Julius Caesar, Mark Antony, Cleopatra, Augustus, Jesus, John the Baptist, the Herodian dynasty, and the destruction of Jerusalem, and the end of the Edomites, or was it?